Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. And if you're like me, you're starting to wonder if a truck like this is a myth, like Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster. But the truth is they are out there. They're just very hard to get. And when you do find them, they're very expensive. Today, we're gonna look at what you do if you can't find a 400 amp meter base or disconnect, or you run into one of these situations that we're getting ready to cover today. Before we get started, I wanna give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video. It's ICM Controls. ICM Controls is your one-stop shop for all things controls. Today, we're gonna to take a look at their whole home search protectors. Let's get to it. All right, y'all, today we're gonna to learn how to build a CT cabinet. And for some of you, this is gonna be a brand new concept. And for some of you, it's gonna be the final piece in the puzzle of your understanding of how to build the CT cabinet and really what it's doing. Before we get started, I wanna remind you to never repeat anything in these videos. Just use them for educational purposes only. Definitely work hand in hand with your local electrical inspector and the utility on this one. They have a lot of say in how you build your CT cabinet. Let's get to it. All right, y'all, every area is gonna be a little bit different, but you're gonna need the basic same materials no matter where you're building it. The utility might be in charge of more of it in your area and you may build the entire thing. Let's talk about some of the basic parts and pieces. You're gonna need your riser material, which is gonna include your conduit, your weather head, your straps, things like your wire, your meter socket itself, your hub, don't forget it. In this case, we're gonna build a 400 amp, so we're gonna need two 200 amp disconnects. And then we're gonna to need to think about things like our grounding, acorn clamps, and our wire. And of course, don't forget about the CT cabinet itself. Now really, this could be any type of enclosure that your electrical company approves of. They may want it to be a specific size. They may want it to be a specific shape. It's definitely gonna to have to be rated for the area that it's installed, weatherproof, corrosion resistant, depending on where you're installing it. Now, let's take a look at the basic install. All right, y'all, we are at Ben Franklin's house, and I'm gonna show you today a basic residential CT cabinet setup. You can build these in commercial. There are a million different ways to do it. If you do it a different way, cool. Drop it down in the comments below. I'm just gonna show you guys the basics today. Everyone's power company's different on how much they want you to do or how much they don't, and the way that they want it set up definitely work hand in hand with both of them. So first thing we're gonna do today is we're gonna mount this CT cabinet. So we mount the CT cabinet here. Now we're gonna build our riser. We put our hub on, we go up, and we will put our PVC in or our rigid metal conduit if we're going through the roof. Then we're gonna do our wire, our weather head, and our two straps. Now we're gonna pop out of the side of the CT and we're gonna mount our meter. Now you can mount this meter on the left, the right, underneath of it, depending on how big your CT cabinet box is. It just depends on where you need it. You could wrap it around and put it on the other side of the house if you wanted to. Now we're gonna pop out of here, we're gonna put panel one, we're gonna pop out here, and we're gonna put panel two. And this is gonna be the basic setup for all of our panels. Then we're gonna come down here. This wire is gonna pipe down into here. We're gonna have wire go to this panel, wire go to this panel, and we're gonna drive two ground rods six foot apart, and we're gonna hook them up. And this is gonna be our basic setup. Now let's go through piece by piece how to kind of wire this thing in and tie in all the grounding. First, we'll take a look at our connections. Then we'll take a look at some of the utility connections. Let's imagine that we have two hots and a neutral coming out of our riser, but let's deal with one wire at a time. So this is our black hot coming out of the riser. We're gonna need a black hot going to panel A, and we're going to need a black hot going to panel B. And then of course, we're gonna need some way to splice this all together. Now, one way that we can do this is with something like this. This is an insulated lug. They're a little bit more expensive, but they're very easy to use in a very rock solid connection. But you can also use any one of these methods here or really any other method that your electrical inspector will allow you to use that is a chapter three wiring method. There are a million different ways to do it and there really is no wrong way to do it. So let's imagine that you decided to use the insulated lug. Once we got this far, we would use our insulated lugs, make that join up there, and then we would follow suit with the neutral and the hot. Now let's look at the utilities connection. Now there are a bunch of different ways that this could go down. They could tell you to just do your thing and then leave them alone. They might wanna have you run wire from the CT cabinet over to the meter, just work with your local electrical company. But let's imagine that this hot comes down. What they're gonna do is they're gonna slap a CT around that wire somewhere. 
and what they're doing is counting the current that's going out and in. Now there are a couple different types of CTs that they could use and they might wire them differently. I'm just using this as a very basic example, but that's actually how they count it. They slap a CT around each hot and then they'll run it over to their meter. They might have you wired up, just depends on where you're at. Before we jump into full out grounding the entire system, I wanna talk about some bonding that you cannot forget to do. All right, y'all, I wanna give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video. It's ICM Controls. And specifically today, I wanna to look at the ICM 518, which is gonna be our 240 volt whole home surge protective device. What I love about this device is it's rated for type one and type two whole home surge protection. It has an insanely high maximum surge current that it's able to take if it's taking the mother load. It's UL listed. It's also NEMA type four X watertight enclosure. You can use this thing indoors or outdoors. It's absolutely bad to the bone. Highly recommend ICM controls. I'll put a link down in the description below. Let's get to it. So you must bond the CT cabinet. Now you could use a bar like this, a lug like this, a lug like this, it doesn't matter. Now this is required to be sized off of table 250.102C1. And we cannot also forget to bond the door. So this door must be bonded. You cannot rely on those hinges to bond this door. Remember you are on the line side of the connection and we do not have the same overcurrent protection that we have when we're on the load side of our service. Finally, let's dial in our grounding electrode system. Now this first wire that I've already got installed here is gonna act as your bonding jumper. Now I wanna make a very important point here. This is gonna be very jurisdictional on how they have you ground this. Your utility company might want you to make that neutral and ground connection in the CT cabinet. They might want you to run your grounding electrode system over here to the meter on the right hand side. But today we're gonna to treat it like your area is counting these two disconnects on the left as your first point of disconnect. So we would need that bonding jumper going to one of these two panels, work with your inspector on how they want you to do that. Then we're gonna imagine in today's scenario that we're driving two ground rods. We're driving them six foot apart. Then we're gonna connect the two together. There's many different ways to do this that are laid out in 250. Then we're gonna go, I'm gonna show you one way that you could do this and you could do it many other ways. And we're gonna talk about a couple. Then we would go from this ground rod to panel A. And then in my opinion, you could go from panel A to panel B and that would be okay. This wire here could be a number six according to 250.66A. Now, before we size this off of table 250.66A, I want you to go read and consider 250.64D1. Upon further inspection, when you read this, you may think that this is required to be a full-sized table 250.66 conductor because of the way that we're doing it. But I'll let you work that out with your inspector. And then the wire going in between the two panels, your inspector might allow it to be a number six and call it an extension of the original grounding electrode conductor, or your inspector might want you to size it from table 250.66 at full size based off of the ungrounded conductors. So this is gonna be very jurisdictional on how they want you to do it. Let me talk about another way that I think you could do it, but work with your inspector. I think you could come from the ground rod to this panel and put another acorn clamp on it and come from the ground rod to this panel. But in my opinion, you should bond the two panels together, but work with your local electrical inspector. Everybody interprets this different. This is just for educational purposes only. Now, let's talk about the final and most important piece. The most important takeaway from today is it doesn't matter if your CT cabinet looks like this, this, or this. In the upper right-hand corner, we have one where there's not even any splices. It just passes through. In the bottom right-hand side, they're using lugs and buses. It looks absolutely gorgeous. On the left-hand side, they're using some insulated connectors. There's absolutely no wrong way to do this as long as you're working with your local electrical inspector and your local utility. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and my bargain is that these videos will add value to you, and you will in turn add value to others. Let's get to it.